Hello viewers, uh, in this session uh, we will see uh, Laurent series expansion uh, of uh, functions uh, in a neighborhood of uh, singularity, uh, particularly poles and essential singularities and uh, we will also see the Cauchy's uh, residue theorem. Okay. So, uh, firstly uh, uh, to motivate uh, this discussion, uh, let us look at uh, the expansion of 1 by 1 uh, minus z, the, the, the uh, Taylor series expansion of uh, 1 by 1 minus z, which is around 0, this is equal to sigma z power n, n equals 0 through infinity. Okay. And then this is valid for uh, modulus of z strictly less than 1. Okay. And now, after having studied singularities, uh, uh, we know that this, uh, this uh, power series uh, expression of this analytic function, okay, uh, function analytic uh, at 0 is only valid uh, on a ball of radius, open ball of radius 1, because this function f has a singularity, it has a simple pole at z equals 1. Okay. So, that is the scenario what is happening is that uh, here is 0 okay, and then uh, the function has a simple pole at uh, z equals 1, okay. simple or not that is not the point, but uh, it has a pole at 1 and then so the Taylor series expansion around 0 okay, um, is valid. Um, in a ball of radius 1, okay, open ball of radius 1 okay, and that ball can have a maximum radius 1, because at 1 there is a certain resistance, there is a pole. So, the Taylor series expansion cannot go beyond 1, uh, so that is that, that, this uh, picture. Okay. So, also um, when, I, when we studied uh, Taylor series, we sort of uh, looked at this real function f of x equals 1 plus x squared and I uh, uh, and I also uh, gave this example to say it is not clear uh, why in the real setting this function uh, 1 by 1 plus x squared has a Taylor series expansion around 0, uh, which has uh, radius of convergence only 1. Okay. So, in the case of uh, real numbers, it is not immediately clear why that happens. So, this the Taylor's expansion by the way is sigma uh, n equals uh, 0 through infinity minus 1 power n x power uh, 2 n okay. and uh, this is valid for modulus of x less than 1. Okay. So, the situation becomes clear when we uh, graduate to uh, complex uh, function 1 by 1 plus z squared. So, let us co consider the corresponding complex function 1 by 1 plus z squared and it has a uh, very uh, similar Taylor series expansion. It is n equals 0 through infinity minus 1 power n z power 2 n around uh, z equals 0 okay. and this is valid for modulus of z strictly less than 1. Okay. And in the case of complex functions, we know why uh, the modulus uh, has to be less than 1, because at z equals plus or minus i, this function has a singularity minus i or plus i, uh, the denominator um, is, is 0. So, this function is undefined. So, you have a ball of radius maximum 1, okay, which is clear of these singularities of this function. Okay. And so, uh, the Taylor series expansion stops at uh, you know 1. Okay. So, the radius of convergence is 1. Earlier, we considered the function 1 by 1 minus z, which is equal to equals 0 through infinity z power n for modulus of z less than 1. All right, there is a pole at 1 and so, this expansion has to stop there. Okay. But what we can do is, of course, it is analytic elsewhere. Okay. So, it is analytic everywhere out you know uh, other than at the point 1 on the complex plane. So, uh, can we do uh, something else to uh, write 1 by 1 minus z as a certain uh, series uh, outside the disk of radius 1. Okay. In, okay. So, in an open set which is outside the uh, closed disk of radius 1. Okay. So, yes we can do that by a uh, small manipulation we will write 1 by 1 minus z equals 1 by z uh, or minus 1 by z times 1 by 1 minus 1 by z. 
okay and so when modulus of z is greater than 1 okay so outside the closed disk of radius 1 a modulus of z is greater than 1 and when this happens 1 by z has modulus strictly less than 1 so we can expand this factor 1 by 1 minus 1 by z uh, as a power series okay so what we can do is we can write that as minus 1 by z okay uh, times uh, sigma n equals 0 through infinity uh, 1 by z power n so that's the geometric series okay and this is valid for modulus of z uh, greater than uh, 1 so this is equal to uh, minus sigma n equals 0 through infinity z power minus n and then there is a another factor then that gives me a minus 1. Okay. So, I will rewrite this as sigma minus m goes from minus infinity to minus 1 uh, z power m. Okay. By reindexing it I can write this as m goes from minus infinity to minus 1. What that means is um, I am allowing the index to start at minus 1 and uh, go through negative integers until uh, forever. Okay. So, but we know that this series uh, converges okay. um, and this is for modulus of z uh, greater than 1. So, then um, we have expanded 1 by 1 minus z outside the disk of radius uh, 1, closed disk of radius 1. Okay. And we will use this uh, to do the following, we will consider uh, this function, we will consider an example okay. uh, 3 by 1 minus z times 4 minus z. This function okay, has two singularities, one is at 1 and another is at 4. So, there is a singularity at 1 and uh, it has a singularity at 4. Okay. So, we we just did something to expand 1 by 1 minus z outside the closed disk of radius 1. So, we have an expansion for 1 by 1 minus z outside of this disk okay. and then we can do we also know that okay, we can expand 1 by 4 minus z okay, um, inside a so, I will do the hashing the other way okay. inside a disk of radius 4 around 0. Okay. So, uh, so, we will uh, see that we have an expansion of this function okay, uh, in an annular region between uh, a, circle, a disk of radius 1 and a disk of radius 4. Okay. So, let me first write this as partial fractions, we can write this as uh, minus 1 by 1 minus z okay, minus 1 by uh, 4 minus z uh, or I apologize this should be plus 1 by 1 minus z and uh, I can expand 1 by 1 minus z. Okay. So, when, when modulus of z is greater than 1, okay, I know that uh, 1 by 1 minus z is equal to sigma but from above okay, uh, minus of m equals minus infinity through minus 1 z power m okay. and this series converges to 1 by 1 minus z when modulus of z is greater than 1. Okay. And likewise, when modulus of z is strictly less than 4, okay, this other part 1 by 4 minus z okay, uh, uh, gives you 1 by 4 minus z can be written as uh, 1 by 4 times 1 by 1 minus z by 4, okay, which is equal to 1 by 4 times sigma uh, n equals 0 through infinity okay, uh, z by 4 power uh, n. Okay. So, put together these two expansions are valid on a common region namely when uh, so when 1 less than modulus of z is strictly less than 4 we have uh, this function 3 by 1 minus z times uh, 4 minus z can be written as uh, minus of sigma m equals minus infinity through minus 1 of z power m 
okay, minus 1 by 4 times sigma n equals 0 through infinity z by 4 raised to n. Okay. So, you see that uh, in the common region, okay, so the indices, one of the indices is running through the negative integers from minus 1 uh, through ever okay, and one of the indices is running um, in the positive direction through the non-negative integers n equals 0 through infinity. Okay. So, we have a sort of a, a series okay, which is double ended, okay. we, we are going, going to call this kind of series as double ended okay. and um, each of them converges in the common region okay, in individually and hence we say that uh, when we put them together okay, uh, like this, they converge to this function uh, on, the, um, on the annular region. Uh, between 1 and 4. So, right I mean 1 less than mod z less than 4 is an annular region. Okay. So, it is the region between a disk of radius 1 okay, and a disk of radius 4. Okay. So, it is all this region uh, not including the boundaries. Okay. This uh, motivates us to uh, expand uh, certain functions okay, uh, in annular regions okay, and uh, we will introduce what is called as uh, Laurent series uh, of functions in annular regions. Okay. So, first I uh, will start with uh, the double ended series. Okay. We say uh, sigma n equals minus infinity through infinity a n converges. Okay. If sigma n equals 0 through infinity a n and sigma n equals 1 through infinity of a minus n, okay, what that means is uh, the, the subscript of a runs through negative integers, okay, both converge. Okay. So, if both of them converge, we say that sigma n equals minus infinity through infinity a n converges. Okay. And uh, in this case, we say what does it converge to? Well, uh, n equals minus infinity through infinity a n is equal to s 1 plus s 2, where uh, okay, s 1 is n equals 0 through infinity a n and s 2 is this other quantity n equals 1 through infinity a minus n, which we agreed already converge, which we uh, supposed already converge. Okay. So, if we call the convergent uh, uh, quantities uh, s 1 and s 2, then um, the original quantity n equals minus infinity through infinity is s 1 plus s 2. Okay. Uh, we say that is s 1 plus s 2. And, uh, uh, with this convention, uh, what we have is uh, the Lorentz theorem, which talks about uh, expanding functions uh, in an annular region as a series, as a double ended series. Okay. So, uh, we uh, look at the annular region A equals z belongs to c okay, such that uh, r less than modulus of z minus a strictly less than s. Okay. So, let, um, let a be this annular region. Okay. What we will allow is we will allow r to equal uh, 0, okay, but it is strictly less than s okay, and s can be as large as it wants, it could be infinity. Okay. So, we will allow the uh, radius r of the, I mean the lower uh, radius of this annular region to, uh, to actually uh, collapse to a point okay. and then we will allow s to be as large as infinity. Okay. So, uh, but here we have a strict inequality. Okay. So, here or here we have a strict inequality and then um, and let f be analytic on A. 
So, f is a function complex function which is analytic on A, then f of z can be written as sigma n equals minus infinity through infinity c n z minus a power n. So, you can expand f as a double ended series uh, for z uh, belonging to this annular region, where okay, these coefficients are not alien. You can uh, select coefficient c n to be 1 by 2 pi i integration around gamma of f of w by w minus a power n plus 1 d w, where that a is the center of that annulus okay, annular region okay, uh, and where uh, gamma okay, and where uh, gamma is uh, circle. So, its trace is a circle okay, is a positively oriented circle of radius r centered at a okay and uh, of course the r lies between r and s okay so that uh, okay, gamma is contained in the annular region okay and uh, this is a so, what that means is this, the trace of gamma is, uh, is a circle um, and gamma is oriented in the counterclockwise direction on that circle okay, and it travels once around that circle. Okay. So, that is your gamma and when gamma is such you can select these c n s to be 1 by 2 pi i of that integral. Okay. So, uh, it is interesting the coefficients look very similar uh, to the coefficients of uh, Taylor's theorem, okay, uh, except that you have now have a double ended series when you have an annular region. Okay. So, that is Laurent's theorem. So, here is uh, the proof of Laurent's theorem. Okay. What we will do is we will do the following by recomposing uh, by a translation. Okay. Uh, we uh, we can assume that uh, a is equal to zero. So uh, we are moving everything. We are moving all of this region, uh, okay, uh, to be centered. This annular region to be centered at zero. Okay. So the function f sort of changes, but that's okay with us. Okay. So we'll assume that a is equal to zero. Okay, uh, and uh, if you want to modify it in another fashion, you can actually assume a equals zero and work it out, and then uh, transfer this series to uh, uh, you know a series centered at a. Okay, by classifying uh, you know uh, the functions to be of two types, uh, you know series around zero and series around a. Okay, anyway, so uh, you can do this and. Um, choose let let you will first fix let z belongs to a okay you will fix one uh, point on the annulus okay and uh, choose and choose p and q okay so that uh, r strictly less than p is strictly less than modulus of z is strictly less than q is strictly less than s Okay. So, I will show a picture, a picture is more uh, helpful here. Okay. So, here is uh, your annular region once again r could be uh, 0 and s could be infinity, but uh, let us suppose that these are the coordinate axis that is the annular region. Okay. So, this is radius r and that is of radius s that is a circle of radius s okay, and the region in between is what you want okay, and uh, gamma is a contour like that okay, oriented in the positive sense okay, that is gamma. Okay. Uh, maybe we'll use color yeah, that is your gamma. Okay. So, uh, 
Now, your choice of P and Q are such that I will not draw the coordinate axis, so that there is less clutter. Okay. So, here is your R circle of radius R, here is a circle of radius P around origin, okay. here is a circle of radius Q okay. and here is a circle of radius S. Okay. So, you have R, this is Q sorry P and that distance is Q is P okay. and finally, that distance is S. Okay. And uh, let gamma 1 and gamma 2 okay, uh, be the simple closed curves whose trace is okay i'll draw another picture okay is as shown okay whose trace and orientation is as shown i need another picture okay so here is now, I will eliminate uh, the curve of radius sorry the circles of radius r and s. Okay. So, here I am only going to draw circles of radius p and q around the origin. Okay. So, here is your p okay. and then here is your circle of radius q. Okay. And your gamma 1, I will draw it in uh, blue, okay. uh, it is the contour which starts here you could assume okay, or anywhere here. Okay. Firstly, z is a point here okay. and then uh, it is any point, okay. uh, notice your z, the modulus of z lies between uh, P and Q. Okay. So, Z is inside here okay. and so gamma 1 goes in this direction okay. and travels in this direction okay. and then uh, goes around in the uh, that direction okay. halfway and it goes this way okay. and then uh, it, it follows the half of the circle of radius uh, Q. Okay, so, that is your gamma 1 okay. and gamma 2 is a contour which starts somewhere here you can assume. Okay. So, it goes around on this circle of radius uh, q okay. and it goes in the opposite direction on this. Okay. I am drawing it a little to the side because I do not want to clutter that line, but uh, essentially it goes in the opposite direction along the same line and it goes around uh, in, in this direction around uh, a circle of radius q okay. and it only covers half of this circle and goes back okay, that way. Uh, so, it traces the same line once again the same comment okay, and it touches that point and then goes back like that. Okay. So, that is your contour uh, gamma 2, okay. so, that is the trace and orientation of the contour gamma 2. Okay. And now, uh, the point is the integration along uh, these line segments okay, that you see here which you know, um, th those line segments. Uh, which pass through the annular region between p and q circles of radius p and q the integration along that cancels okay and then uh, when you integrate uh, along gamma 1 plus gamma 2 uh, what is going to remain is only the integration along along the outer circle and along uh, the inner circle in the opposite direction okay so that's the idea okay so uh, so f of z now okay is equal to 1 by 2 pi i times integration uh, over gamma 1 okay, of f of w by w minus z d w, because 
gamma 1 okay, contains z in its interior okay, and uh, f is analytic on and inside of gamma 1. Okay. So, since, since gamma f is analytic on and inside gamma 1 and z belongs to the interior of gamma 1. Okay. So, that is the trick okay. and, and also um, 1 by 2 pi i times integral over gamma 2 okay, uh, f of w by w minus z d z. What is that? See uh, uh, d w sorry, what is that? That is equal to 0, because z lies in the exterior of uh, this curve gamma 2. Okay. Since, f by uh, f of w by w minus z is analytic for uh, w belongs to uh, inside of gamma 2 and w belongs to gamma 2 star. Okay. Whether uh, okay, I should say the, uh, f of w by w minus z is analytic on and inside uh, inside the contour gamma 2. Okay. But when I say f of w by w minus z, there are two variables. So, I should uh, exactly specify which variable I am talking about. So, I have uh, okay, I have been uh, clear. I am saying that with respect to w, okay, this function f of w by w minus z is analytic on and inside gamma 2. Okay. And so, uh, this integration uh, is equal to uh, 0. Okay. And uh, by combining these two things, what we can say is that f of z plus 0, okay, which is f of z is equal to 1 by 2 pi i times integration over gamma 1, okay, uh, gamma 1 f of w by w minus z dz plus uh, integration over, uh, okay, I will rather take the minus of this. Okay, uh, Okay, minus so f of z minus zero technically okay is uh, minus integration over gamma two f of w by oh sorry I need a plus I apologize I need a plus okay f of w by w minus z uh, dw okay need a plus so what that transfers to is uh, one by two pi i integration over gamma one plus gamma two Okay, f of w by w minus z dw, this is a dw, dw etcetera okay. and gamma 1 plus gamma 2 like I explained uh, gamma 1 plus gamma 2 will give you integration on the circle of radius q okay, uh, in the positive direction and integration on the circle of uh, radius p in the negatively uh, neg negative uh, direction. Okay. So, this is equal to 1 by 2 pi i integration on uh, I will say uh, c q I will uh, write what this is okay. c q f of w by w minus z d w minus 1 by 2 pi i integration on c p uh, f of w by w minus z d z. Okay. Here C p okay, is a okay, circle of radius p okay, uh, okay, oriented positively short and C q likewise is a circle of radius q oriented positively okay. and uh, this is okay, they go around once okay, only once on those circles those are the contours okay, and that is equal to uh, 1 by 2 pi i first integration on c q okay, of sigma uh, n equals 0 through infinity z power n by w power n plus 1 uh, f of w uh, d w okay, uh, minus 1 by 2 pi i integration uh, 
of on CP of sigma m equals 0 through infinity of uh, minus w power m by z power m plus 1 f of w d w. Okay, I am going to explain. So, what I am doing here is that uh, I am taking 1 by w minus z okay, and notice uh, that z is in between the circles of uh, uh, radius q and p. Okay. So, what that means is that or you can look at this inequality sorry, uh, you can look at this inequality modulus of z is in between uh, p and q. Okay. So, uh, w uh, when it ranges on c q, okay, uh, the modulus of uh, so on is equal to uh, sigma uh, z by 1 by w times z by w power n n equals 0 through infinity okay, uh, on, okay, on c q. Okay. So, the modulus of z by w is strictly less than uh, 1 when uh, w is on c q. So, uh, 1 by w minus z can be expanded as geometric series by pulling out uh, 1 by w okay, and uh, you have 1 by 1 minus z by w which you can expand as geometric series. Okay. And likewise, for the second term, what I am using is uh, when uh, you have w on C p, okay, w by z is going to be uh, less than 1 in modulus. Okay. W by z uh, can I mean can then be used, you, you, you can use geometric series to, uh, to expand uh, 1 by w minus z, you can uh, do the trick that we did at the beginning of this session okay, for 1 by 1 minus z, what you can do is you can pull out a 1 by z okay, times 1 by uh, w by z time minus 1 okay, and that can be expanded as geometric series. So, you get uh, 1 by z times minus of sigma and m equals 0 through infinity of 1 of w by z power uh, m okay and uh, hence the second expression as a series okay uh, this i should say on cp because the modulus uh, the, i mean uh, p is strictly less than uh, uh, the modulus of z okay you can do this for w belongs to cp so uh, that's uh, you know that is how we introduce these uh, series into the integra integrands. Okay. And now, we want a, a lemma which exchanges the order of uh, summation and integration. Okay. So, that uh, we will recall a certain uh, lemma we proved uh, before uh, Taylor's theorem. Okay. So, it is an exercise for the uh, viewer, it is an easy exercise uh, to show that the order of integration and summation can be exchanged. Okay. So, uh, please try that and uh, when you uh, do that exercise, this is e going to be equal to sigma n equals 0 through infinity okay. uh, integration over c q of uh, f of w by w power n plus 1 uh, d w. Okay, times z power n okay, and maybe I, I want to put the 2 pi i inside as well. Okay, so, I will write uh, n equals 0 through infinity sigma n equals 0 through infinity 1 by 2 pi i okay, and then uh, plus sigma m equals 0 through infinity. Uh, 1 by 2 pi i times uh, integration over C p of uh, w power m f of w d w and then there is a 1 by z power m plus 1, uh, 1 by z power. So, I will write simply divide by z power m plus 1. And so, now uh, 
by a certain version of Cauchy's theorem. Okay, integration over C q can be replaced by uh, integration over gamma. Okay, so, now by uh, Cauchy's theorem. Okay, uh, so integration f of z is equal to, so this is all equal to f of z. So, this f of z is equal to n equals 0 through infinity 1 by 2 pi i integration over gamma. So, I am replacing c q with gamma okay, uh, f of w by uh, w power n plus 1 d w okay, plus integration from n equals uh, minus 1 through minus infinity okay, or minus infinity through minus 1 whichever way uh, 1 by 2 pi i uh, integration over gamma of f of w d w. Okay, f of w, uh, I will say z power m divided by uh, w power n plus 1 d w. Okay, I am missing uh, z power n here, I apologize, I should have a z power n here and this is z power n. Okay. So, putting these together, uh, uh, okay, so I have ex changed the index here. I have uh, converted m to n. Uh, okay, uh, taking substituting n equals minus m minus one. So I'm taking n equals minus m minus one. Okay, so uh, putting these together, we have what we want. This is equal to sigma n equals minus infinity through infinity. So, firstly both of these converge of course, okay, and then uh, this is equal to n equals minus infinity through infinity of 1 by 2 pi i uh, integration over gamma of f of w times z power n by w power n plus 1 both these now look the same okay, uh, d w. Okay. So, your uh, c n is indeed uh, 1 by 2 pi i times integration over gamma of f of w by w power n plus 1. Okay. So, uh, that completes the proof of um, the Laurent's theorem. Okay. So, we can expand f of z as series uh, in an annular uh, region, where f is analytic. The important step that we did not, uh, we left it as an exercise to the viewer uh, is the step here. Okay, that uh, the the series and uh, the summation order of summation and the integration can be exchanged. Okay, so uh, please complete that exercise, and when you complete that exercise, uh, you have the proof of this theorem. Okay, now what we are going to do is we are also going to show that this uh, series expansion is unique. Okay, so uniqueness of Lorentz uh, expansion. Okay. Let f be analytic okay, in A equals z belongs to C, the same setup R strictly less than mod z minus A strictly less than S, you will allow uh, R to be 0 and you will also allow S to be infinity okay. and suppose that f of z is equal to sigma n equals minus infinity through infinity d n z minus a power n. So, suppose you are able to expand f of z as a double ended series in some other format okay, with other coefficients uh, d n z belongs to a, okay, then uh, it has to be that d n is equal to c n coming from above okay, for all n belongs to uh, z. Okay. I can directly say this as the d n is equal to 1 by 2 pi i integral gamma uh, f of w by w minus a uh, raised to n plus 1 okay, d w. Okay. So, what that is saying is that if you are able to expand f as a, a double ended series, then the coefficients have to be of the form that Lorentz uh, theorem uh, specifies. 
Okay. And the proof is as follows once again uh, you can assume that can assume a is equal to 0. Okay. Choose r such that r lies between capital R and uh, capital S. Okay. Then uh, 2 pi i times c n the nth coefficient okay, uh, from the theorem. Okay. So, this c n coming from previous theorem okay, uh, is equal to uh, integration over c r okay, f of w by w minus a uh, power n plus 1 d w that is the that is the coefficient here. Okay. So, uh, and then uh, that is equal to integration over c r uh, C r is a circle of radius r here once again uh, oriented in the positive sense. Okay. So, I am not uh, writing that here this is equal to sigma r equals minus infinity through infinity uh, of d n uh, w minus a. Okay. So, this is r k equals minus infinity through infinity of d n w minus a power k, uh, because I can write f like that. Uh, uh, and then times 1 by w minus a power n plus 1. Okay. So, f we assume can be written as uh, d n times z minus a uh, power n okay, for z belongs to a and here the w belongs to uh, is on the contour c r which means it belongs to a. So, you can write f of w in that fashion okay. and then that is equal to integral over c r. Uh, sigma k equals minus infinity through infinity of d n times w minus a power k minus n minus 1. Okay. So, I cancel the factors of uh, w minus a to get that okay. Okay. or I, I just change the uh, exponent. Okay. So, this is equal to integration over c r sigma k equals 0 through infinity d n w minus a power k minus n minus 1 d w plus integral over c r sigma m equals 1 through 1 through infinity d minus m. So, I am splitting the integral okay, uh, on two series uh, w minus a power uh, minus m minus n minus 1 okay, uh, d w. Okay. And then uh, this is 2 pi i times c n now is equal to once again I will invoke that uh, theorem which exchanges the order of summation and integration. Okay. So, that gives me k equals minus infinity through infinity okay, of uh, d k times integration over c r of w okay, w minus a power k minus n minus 1. Okay. So, I actually never used uh, the fact that I can assume that a is equal to 0. Okay. So, I actually can eliminate that I have been doing this around a itself. Okay. So, um, this boils down to the fundamental integral and we know that uh, this integral. So, I am summing these two things putting these two things together okay and we know that the fundamental integral is um, zero except when the uh, exponent is uh, minus 1 okay so this gives us um, 2 pi i this summation all the terms in the summation are zero except when this exponent k minus n minus 1 is equal to minus 1 okay so which means uh, this is when k equals n so you are left with just uh, dn okay sorry 2 pi i times d okay so that tells you that the cn which is coming from the previous theorem which is 1 by 2 pi i all that integral over gamma f of w by uh, uh, w power n okay w minus a power n okay uh, n plus 1 tw okay that is your cn is equal to dn okay so that proves the uniqueness part, part of uh, Lorentz expansion. Okay. So, there is a unique expansion as a double ended series of f 
where the coefficients are of this form uh, are of uh, you know this this form which is 1 by 2 pi i times uh, integration over gamma of f of w by w minus a power n plus 1 d w. Okay. So, um, I will stop here.